yet the polls have been incredibly close. And I realize I'm speaking broadly. Yeah. Right. Um, even post debate, you know, some polling indicates that, you know, perhaps she would have had a better night performance on Tuesday night. Um, but when you look at those swing states, it's still neck and neck. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is going to happen in the next 50 days that if you believe Trump should be the next president, what can he do to separate himself? Yeah, I think he just needs to focus on uh, the failures of, of their administration and her failures, uh, not just as a candidate, but as vice president, because she's making this case, oh, I'm going to come in and fix all these problems. And here's my plan to fix all these problems, the problems that she created. Um, newsflash, she's been in office three and a half years. She was a senator before that, um, enabling this agenda to happen. Um, every congressional Democrat has had the backs of this agenda for the last three and a half years. And look where it's gotten our country. And so that's, a, I think, the case that President Trump needs to go out and make um, in all of these swing states. It's the, the same argument I'm going to make to my constituents uh, back home. Uh, look at the contrast. Uh, do you want a secure border? Do you want uh, a better economy? Do you want respect again on the global stage? And, um, or do you want more of these hot wars popping up all over the world, a wide open border and uh, Green New Deal policies? You know, we, we haven't heard that much out of the vice president in terms of what her specific policy issues are. We know that she has flip-flopped on a number of really right. key issues like private insurance and things like that. Um, but they keep on dragging up this idea that, that Trump is going to slash and destroy Social Security. I think we've all heard this out of Democrats before. This is what she had to say the other day. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. And he wants to impose what I call a Trump sales tax on everyday basic necessities, which will cost the average American family nearly $4,000 a year. Foreign President has actually said that he wants to cut taxes on Social Security benefits, not right. cut Social Security. She's, but she continues to get away with this. Yeah, and if they, you know, I think they have the mantra, if they keep lying enough, they'll, they'll believe it, and everybody listening to them will believe that. Uh, I think that, I, I, I hate the fear-mongering around Social Security. I think it's, it's frankly irresponsible. President Biden did it in his State of the Union address. Republicans have said we want to protect Social Security. We actually want to save the program to make sure it's around for future generations. So um, I think that... Um, Again, their their whole tactic over the next couple months is going to be talk like a liberal, uh, talk like a moderate, but they will govern like liberals. And uh, I, I would point to something that our uh, ranking member on appropriations said earlier this year in committee. She actually said we don't have a spending problem; we have a revenue problem. Uh, to to me, that signals. They want to keep spending money, and they want to raise more taxes to do it. And they've been very, very overt about their plans. Five trillion dollars. Uh, right. So President Budgen's, uh, Biden's budget request earlier this year, uh, Kamala Harris's plans, we know what that roadmap is. She's just going to tax more and spend more. And um, at some point, she's going to run out of other people's money. Um, and I think the American people are tired of that. Uh, half of the American population, roughly half, are women, women voters. And they're looking for a candidate who's going to be best representing them in Washington. Yeah. There's a gender gap when it comes to polling. And Kamala Harris takes it away with women. Mm -hmm. As a Republican woman yourself, yeah. uh, what would you say is the strongest argument for women to vote and, and pull the lever for Donald Trump this election? Yeah. Well, number one, I still vote with my pocketbook. Uh, even as a member of Congress, I still vote with my pocketbook. I think it's really important. And I know how much, you know, milk my kids are 13 and 11 and how much food they're going through right now. So I, I look at our grocery bills. I see that inflation at the grocery store. Um, I see the increase in our taxes. I see, um, you know, the, the worry that I have as a mom to a 13-year-old boy of, oh, could he be the one that's going to go fight in a foreign war in a couple of years? Uh, I think all of those things really matter. Um, not to mention, you look at uh, the administration officials, all the regulation and the cost that that puts on American families. Uh, it's not just about the person in the Oval Office. It's about all of the people under them. And so for the past three and a half years, we've seen regulation after regulation come out of the SEC, the FTC. Um, these things all add cost for consumers, um, kind of a, an added inflationary tax on all of us. So that would be my case to women is if you care about your family and you care about women, issues in small business and our economy vote for President Trump because he's going to put into place um, across his administration people who will help to raise up and elevate the American people.